Luke, we're here in Crete at the uh, Physics of Fine Tuning Conference. I've been following fine tuning for, for de several decades. And in the early days, it was really philosophers, philosophers of religion, some scientists who were really uh, embedded in the science theology dialogues uh, in, in both ways, uh, theists and, and atheists. Uh, but here, it's mainstream physicists. So I know you've focused on fine-tuning. Uh, give me a sense of the recent history of, 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 of how fine-tuning has developed, and particularly why now mainstream physicists. I think there's been a realization that some of the uh, big problems in physics have turned out to be kind of fine-tuning problems. So, for example, in, in particle physics, there's this problem called the hierarchy problem that some of... Uh, the masses of the particles, the fundamental particles, seem to be unusually small, and we're not entirely sure why, and that's kind of a fine-tuning problem. If I, if I change this number a little bit, then some rather drastic results happen. So once you started to realize that, all these things that people were talking about back in the, you know, the 70s yeah. and 80s yeah. turned out to be the same sorts of problems that we have started off with, that, that the same sort of problem that, uh, that they were talking about all along. And so once you've realized that, actually fine-tuning this idea that these numbers that we don't quite know why they are what they are and they have drastic, drastic consequences is now a problem you start to see in more places in physics. Um, the other thing that, that's brought into the mainstream is that uh, cosmology has been talking a lot about the multiverse. There's been a, a realization whether it's been thought of as a solution to fine-tuning or just something that naturally falls out of our ideas about the universe, this idea that the, you know, there's lots of other universes out there seems to be getting a lot more traction these days. Uh, let's go through the different categories of fine-tuning. Um, how would you define them? You talked about physics and cosmology as, as two areas, but can you, um, can you organize it in a way? Um, you're saying the, um, the, one way of thinking is by field, physics and in mm -hmm. cosmology. I mean, we could perhaps go talk about in biology as well mm -hmm. in, in, different, in a different way. Uh, but how about from the standpoint of, of kind of functionality? You mentioned that the small sizes of some of the uh, particles. Another might be the huge difference in relative sizes of forces, like mm. gravity being 10 to the 40th times uh, yeah. uh, electromagnetism and power. I mean, how would you organize that? I mean, <clears throat> the thing that binds them all together, first of all, the, the unity is there are these numbers in physics. We don't know why they are what they are. And then within those, there's sort of two categories. There's the fundamental properties of the universe, the, the stuff of the universe. So that's particles, masses, forces, those sorts of things. And then there's what you might categorize under initial conditions of the cosmos. So how fast is it, it uh, expanding? What's it full of the cosmological constant? Um, so those are sort of two separate areas where, okay. where we can look at them. And there are interesting cases of fine tuning in each. There are various ways where if you change these numbers, you can make disasters for life. You can make the universe much less complicated, much less capable of complexity. Is another way um, looking at initial conditions and then uh, conditions thereafter. I'm trying to get ways of kind of dividing this so we can get a sense of, of, the, of the structure of fine tuning as opposed to just lots of specific facts. Yeah. So the. The division that, uh, that I was talking about there is, is really a division in, in, when you think of it as a physicist, between what's there in the equations that, de de that determine how the universe uh, moves and changes and evolves and all those sorts of things. And how did the universe start off? What's the specific properties of this universe? Right, right. So, so both of those have to sort of come together to produce the universe as we see it. But those are both when you sort of boil physics down to its basic elements. You have an equation, you have some numbers in the equation, you have some numbers that describe the specific universe that uh, we think we live in, uh, and those are the numbers that we can't currently explain, just because that's where our physics Explained by stops. first principles. We, yeah. we know what they are, we've measured them to super yes, accuracy in, in some cases, yeah. uh, but they're just what they are as opposed to having good reason, right? Yeah, yeah. For, for the moment, they just appear in the, the, the deepest <laughs> equations we have, and that's, that's all we have to say about them, other than 
what if we change them a little bit? And that's where fine tuning mm. starts. So about how, what, what's the, the, um, the order of magnitude of, of amount of numbers we're talking about in physics and cosmology by, by category, initial conditions, initial physics, there are what, 26 or so? Yeah, that's about <coughs> right. So there's, there's 26 in what's called the standard model of particle physics. That's particle physics. That's right. particle physics. That's the stuff <laughs> the universe is made of. And then mm. you know, the, the standard cosmological model is about six more numbers. Uh, okay. that, that tell you how the universe starts and how it evolves, and one more to say where we are in the sort of history of the cosmos. Okay, so order of magnitude, we're dealing with less than 40? Yeah, know. so 30, I'd say. Yeah, so, so, okay, so, so of the 26 that are fundamental, um, are some, how do you divide between uh, particles and forces? So there's, there's four fundamental forces, and there's, there's numbers attached to the strengths of those, and there's other numbers that tell us how those things work. So the weak force, for example, can convert one type of particle to another. Right. There's some numbers we need to, to, to right. govern that. And then there's the fundamental masses of those particles. Um, so you, uh, there's sort of one per fundamental particle. Yeah, and, and those are the majority, 20, 22, or whatever they happen to be. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, all right, then in cosmology, how would you do, uh, divide the you know, you said six or so key key numbers. Give me some examples. So one of them would be how much matter is there, dark matter and ordinary matter for, for every sort of photon, every particle of light in the universe. Um, how so much? What, what is that number? I mean, there are like 10 to the 90th photons or something? It, that one, th there are an awful lot of photons. So <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's basically one for ordinary matter, it's, it's one proton for, per billion photons, okay. roughly. Okay. Okay. Um, so those numbers, and then there's about six times as much dark matter as ordinary matter. Okay. Uh, and then there's the cosmological constant. So if you turn that into a form of energy, we call it dark energy, there's about uh, twice or a bit more than twice as much energy as there is energy in uh, matter, dark and ordinary matter. Right. So those are the sorts of numbers in cosmology. Right. And uh, each of these are subject to a fine-tuning tune analysis, is that...? Yeah, uh, each of them we can say what would happen if I changed this number. And s in some of them, to be honest, not much changes, but there are probably about ten of them where within the total range that the theory allows for these numbers, um, some disasters happen for life if you change the numbers by too yeah. much. And it would, not just for life, but it would be for structure in general. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. we would love to start with the basic equations we have and sort of derive what would happen for life on a planet and all those sorts yeah. of things. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we can't do that, but what we can say is when structure in the universe would fail to form. So one of the most convincing cases for, for the particle physics numbers is when will I not get any... Uh, when will I not have them stick together to make okay. nu a nuclei and, and yeah. atoms? Right. So if you don't make those, you probably don't make any of the bigger things. Right, right. So uh, in terms of your um, um, feelings today, as you've, as you've followed fine-tuning, you know, for I don't know how many years, 15, 20 years or something well, you've been interested in? Ten, <laughs> ten, let's say. Well, you thought about it when you were younger, right? Yeah, so. well, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so, um, well, do you sense a, a, a trend? Yeah, I think there's been a trend towards taking these things more seriously. One of the things that's been interesting is the early days of fine-tuning, there was uh, a lot of back-of-the-envelope calculations, whereas now, as these things have been taken more seriously, a lot more of the sort of the, the heavy machinery of, of theoretical physics is being aimed at these problems, better models of stars, better models of galaxy formation. Um, on the particle physics side, more sophisticated models of of how particle physics comes together. And a lot of these are, are backing up the original calculations. A couple of them are actually sort of uh, overturning them. There's one or two cases like that. But um, uh, yeah, for the most part, we're, we're seeing in more and more detail just what happens when you change these numbers.